Welcome to the Bentec 7X assembly tutorial. Before we start, we're going to go over some things that all of our customers should come to understand in order to use their software efficiently. The display area shows what we call a TriStar, which is used as a directional guide and starting point for most projects. The directions are defined as left, right, front, back, ceiling, and floor. Compared to the XYZ directional, this seems to be an easier concept for most people to understand. However, if you're used to having it another way, you can always change the look of the TriStar in the settings section if that makes you more comfortable. Pick points are used for everything. So what are they? Pick points are simply points in 3D space created by the user that are meant to define where the parts in the project will be placed. Once pick points are placed in the display area, you can build off of them by using them as reference points for other points. Most of the time, you can think of them as the end of your tape measure. Center line means exactly what it sounds like. Every line that you create in the assembly designer represents the very center of the material you're working with. Think about it like the way a wick runs through the center of a candle. The apex of the bend is really the intersection of two center lines as if there wasn't a radius. You can start by opening the software and selecting the assembly designer. From here, select the pick points tab to begin creating our first part. Type 36 into the ceiling field and 6 into the left field. Then click apply to create the first point. Click the clear values button and type 36 into the left field and select the point you've just created as a reference point. And click apply. Clear the values again and type 48 into the left field this time, then switch the reference point to the TriStar and click Apply. These are the points that make up the foundation of our first part. Note that the only die and material available are defaults. For our purposes, we'll need to enter information for both a new die and a new kind of material. So go up to the Tools tab and select the Die Library option. From there, select the Add New button and name the die 3.0. Continue by entering 3.12 as the Achieve CLR and 3.36 as the Calibrated CLR. Enter a zero into the Bend Location Offset and click the Save button. Now the new die will be added to your die library. Go ahead and close the window, and since we need to enter our material information as well, go up to the tools again and select the tube pipe library. From there, select the add new button and type 1.0 in the material name field. Then, in the thickness field, type in 0.095 followed by a 1.0 in the diameter field. Then click the Save button and you'll see that your material has been added to the material list. Now close the window, select the 1 inch material and the 3 inch die before creating the first part. Select the Bent button and change the number of bends to 2 and select OK. Then Select each of the pick points on the screen, rotating from right to left. Save the part by clicking OK. After a part is created, it will appear in the Master Parts list under the Main tab. Before the part is duplicated into the assembly, it needs an anchor point where it can be set. Still in the Pick Points tab, enter 72 into the Front Value field and click Apply to place our first anchor. Now click back on the Main tab, select our part from the Master List, and select the Paste button. Choose the new Pick Point to place a copy into the assembly. To place another anchor point, go back to Pick Points and type 36 into the Front field to apply a point directly in the middle of the two parts. 
Then go back to the main tab and paste the part again and place it on the new pick point. Go back to the pick points tab, select the lines sub tab and type 7 in the move amount field. Then select the set reference button and choose the lowermost yellow pick point on the middle part in the assembly. This point represents the tangent or beginning of the bend. Then click the bottom pick point and apply to create the new point along the leg of the part. Now create the same point on the other side using the same method. Set the reference, select the yellow pick point, click the bottom point, and click apply to finish. Now we're going to shorten up the legs of the middle part. Go to the edit tab and select the move feature button. From there, select the middle part in the display and click the bottom point and the point above it to shorten the leg. With the move feature button still selected, repeat the same process on the other side. Now we need to make some pick points along the other four legs that are going to be needed to place cross sections. So go to the pick points tab again, select the plain arc sub tab, we're using this feature because it can place points along the angled tube without us actually having to calculate the angle of the leg. Start by entering 4 in the move amount field, then select the base point button. From there, click the bottom pick point of the first leg and select the part itself, then click apply to place the point. You'll have to repeat this four click process another three times to place all four points on the legs. After all four points have been placed, select the straight button and create two cross sections connecting the two outside parts. Then, under the plain arc sub tab again, type 12 into the move amount field. Click the set base button and place points 12 inches upwards on each of the four legs as we did before. Set the base, click the pick point, select the feature, and click apply. These points will be the anchor points for the last four straight parts in this assembly. Once all pick points are placed on the legs, select the straight button and create four straight parts that connect the middle part to the two end parts. Thank you for completing our assembly tutorial. For more helpful and informational videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook.